Well good afternoon and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now here we've got a plant that I'm not very happy with. It's a Phragmopedium andium fire and it should have a stem twice as big as it is and it should have loads of, uh, of flowers along the stem. This year it's put up a very very thin stem, a weak stem, although it's very hard and it's had uh, I think three flowers on but all, none of them at the same time. So there's something going wrong here, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to unpot it and have a good look at it. And I might even split it. Now I've done many divisions from this plant, but I'm not happy with the way it's been this year. So uh, I hate these very thin stems. Now from what I can remember, thin stems could be caused by over fertilising, but these can't be over fertilised because they only get a teaspoonful of fish blood and bone every six months. Uh, the other reason is that there could be a lack of light, that does that, or a lack of potassium, that could do it as well. But. Uh, We'll just try a few things and we'll just take this out of the pot and have a look, see what's going on. It hasn't been out of its pot for uh, quite some time. Oh, it's hard. Take the top off there, and it feels like there's two plants. And I've only ever had one. It might have split itself. There we are. Well, I'm not going to rumble about the roots. I will just clean that up. And yeah. Look at that, it split itself into two parts, so uh, I think it's about time it was, uh, it was repotted. Anyhow, I'll clean all this up. I'll just start to clean this one up and, uh, and then we'll have a, a good look at it. The, the roots here feel very wet, which they should do, on uh, Phragmopediums. Uh, it looks like it's going to come apart quite easily. So if I lived in uh, Canada and places like that, I know people would want a piece of this one. Just one or two soft roots in the middle, which is natural. One soft root, just get some scissors and chop it off. Looks like it could go in a deeper pot now, this one. Just try and separate everything. Roots there, absolutely lovely. But they're all getting intertwined with each other, so uh, we'll do a little separation job on it. There right, I'll just cut off the uh, the bad roots. There aren't so many bad roots on this one, but uh, I'll take off what there is. There's one. I'll nip that one off. I'm 
just looking at all the black ones. I mean, the, the light coloured brown ones are fine. Some of the black ones are okay too. So I think there was just that one. Just a little one there, which is a right. Let's have a look at this then. See where it's joined. It's just joined there by one root and it's being held together by the strong roots down here just combining with the roots off the other plant. So if we just pick that one in the middle which is a very very thin one that's holding it, you can see there that should be coming apart. Yep. Now I don't like forcing it apart, so we'll unfasten these uh, roots very, very carefully. I hope you bear, bear with me while I do this. I get the right ones. I mean if this was in one of those uh, small pots all the roots would have been curled round each other and everything but with being in a deep pot they're, uh, they're not too bad. It's just finding the right ones. This one is a long root that comes way over here. So we've got to get it back over there. There we go. And I can't bend them too much or else they'll snap. Because they're very brittle. That's that one. Can't see what else is holding it here. You see the rhizome is uh, is bending. Maybe that just wants a little nick. So should we do that? Yep. Right there. Uh, it's got a root attached to both sides. So I think we're there now. Yep. There we are. We've got two plants. We'll just have a look at the roots and put a little bit of uh, dragon's blood on where I nick the uh, rhizome. Dragon's blood. Lost a long time this. Put a little drop on there. And a little drop on there. So we'll just have a look at the roots on these two.
two pieces. Well, this is one of the plants. The one that's not flowering but has flowered before. There, you can see the thickness of that uh, of that stem compared to the thickness of the other. I'll show you in a minute. That that root's, root's going over a bit, but it's warm, dry. Uh, anything round the bottom growing? Yeah, he's got a. There's one, two, three growths on this one, so that should be fine. Root system's fine too. So we'll, we'll get that in another deep pot. Just trim this up, all the little pieces. So we'll do that now. Well, I've taken that leaf off that was brown and uh, a little bit of brown there, but I've touched it up with some dragon's blood, so that should be fine. And uh, I think we've got one little growth coming up there. Can you see it? Yeah. See, better I take it further away. So that needs potting up, so that's another ambient fire. This is the other one with all the nice roots on it. You can see there where I've put some uh, dragon's blood onto the breakage there, where I cut through it. This one has got a nice little growth there coming up. Needs some uh, dead leaves taken off there. Oh, there's another little growth there as well. So, uh, these should make nice plants. I will start giving them more light, I think, and that should be doing, but uh, I showed you the stem on the other one. Look at the thickness of this one. Absolutely nothing. Terrible. But uh, I must say it's got, got quite a nice flower on it, but uh, there should be more on each stem. So we'll get these potted up again and, uh, and relabeled and put the uh, date on of, uh, of splitting and repotting. Uh, now I've noticed on this bark that uh, a lot of the pieces are cracking up. The, you know, they're breaking in two quite easily. So it's time it was repotted. So I'll throw this, uh, this medium away and uh, I'll get some fresh ones. Well I've just got some new or Orchiata bark, it's never been used and I was amazed at all the finings in it, well it's not finings, it's dust, a piece of wood there, but look at this, how can you pot up in that, and that was in Orchiata, not as good as it used to be, oh well, make the most of what we've got. Right, I've got a right mix of uh, of medium here for them. There's growth stones, there's medium orchiata, there's small Sumatran bark, and uh, a bit of fern moss. Uh, you know, a bit of fern tree. That's it. So uh, we're going to use that, and uh, I think what I'll do, I'll put a little bit of. Uh, a fish blood and bone into this mix instead of watering it again on top and watering it in. So here's the fish blood and bone. Put a bit more in for that one. Then we'll mix it all together. And this one hardly smells at all. So uh, I've heard of people saying they can't have it in the house because uh, it smells too much, but uh, I've never noticed the smell of this one. Right, we'll mix it all together. Just looking at the pot they came out of, and uh, there you are. So it does need deeper pot, and I think I might have to go to uh, three litre pots. So we'll get a couple of those and we'll have a look. 
Well, the three litre pots aren't much, uh, aren't much deeper, so we'll uh, stick with the other ones. Well, this one has got some wider root uh, thing that I think I will put this in the three litre pot. So we'll start off by putting a load in. Dude, it's better sat down, I think. There we are, that's a nice fit. And then this will need a very, very good watering afterwards. Sometime uh, in the next week, I'm going to uh, set up a different uh, drip system. And if the weather doesn't freeze, then I'll. Uh, I'll switch it on until this uh, until this frost. Because the drift, the look at that piece of uh, coconut husk. The drip system I had before was uh, was just a, a bit of. Uh, Aquarium airline uh, going from one to another, but it was a, it was all over the place. And uh, this time I'm going to make it so if I want to take a plant out, have a look at it. I don't need to uh, unfasten everything. Spaces are blocked up inside. Make sure the plant's nice and firm. Got the two little growths here at this side, so they're fine. They've got plenty of room. They've got. Uh, Three inches to grow in there. So that's that one. Well, the next one will go in this uh, two litre pot because that's uh, they're not very wide and one thing other, and it'll it'll just fit in there nicely. So we'll use that one. So we'll put it in first to make sure it goes to, way down to the bottom. Need some more, some more medium. Yep, I'll need some more medium. Quite a bit more. Right, so we'll get some more before we go any further. Some more uh, mix here, so uh, we'll put that in. There's plenty of fish blood and bones still in here now. I think one of the only comments I've had about, uh, about the cat layers that I put in this area. Uh, was one lady saying that uh, she's tried and tried and tried to put uh, the roots on her uh, cat layers are always dying. So uh, I can only put that down too. Is she doing them in a clear pot? I don't know. Because if you do them in a clear pot, which I don't like, the, uh, the actual pots soak up a lot of fertiliser 
I mean, you've seen them on garden plants, haven't you? Where they fertilize them and uh, all the sides of the uh, of the terracotta pot goes white. And that's the salts being soaked up by the medium, by the, uh, by the pot. And if your roots and your cat layers, this is only my opinion, you might not like it, but I can only give an opinion. The, uh, the roots, when they grow over the top and they come sideways and they touch the terracotta pot and it's full of salts, it's going to kill them. Or they're being over fertilised. You know, if you've got some nice roots coming out and suddenly the ends go black, it's generally fertilisation that does that. Too much fertilising. I mean, on my plants, I never use too much fertiliser. You know, it's very rare. And when I do use it, it's only once, once in a blue moon, and then they get flushed through three or four times a month. So that's that one done. So well, that's two Andean fires I've got now. So uh, what I'll do, I'll make some labels for them, put them in, give them a good watering, put them back into place, and uh, keep my fingers crossed that they're going to do fine. Well, they're the two Andean fires, both uh, both potted up, and then it won't affect the flower at all. It won't uh, suddenly fade and die. You don't mind that. Uh, right, I just thank you all for watching, and uh, I'd like to thank all my subscribers as usual. And if you haven't subscribed again, I would much appreciate it if you did so. So until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.